Good evening, brothers and sisters in Christ. So I wanted to do a quick reading on um, the parable of the sower. I've been doing a lot of yard work, and the Holy Spirit's been putting upon my heart things about, um, I don't know, he's just really cool. Jesus is um, amazing how he teaches in untraditional ways, like just through general things you know everyday things this this win um so i've been doing some yard work and i was talking the other day about spiritual pruning and how difficult that is and i've had quite a bit of it <laughs> i must have needed all the help i can get but um so i was sort of deadheading things and cutting off branches that that were dead and um the Holy Spirit kind of was speaking to my heart about, you know, removing things from our lives that do not benefit the kingdom of God. And if we were truly seeking Him and, um, um, you know, surrendering ourselves to Jesus and allowing Him to, um, you know, remove things that are dead or not serving the kingdom of God or not benefiting our spiritual walk and he will do that but um, I want to read this if, if the pages will work with me here um, so the parable of the sower and this is Matthew 13 the same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake such large crowds gathered around him that he got into the boat and sat in it while I'm sorry why all the people stood on the shore then he told them many things in parables saying a farmer went out to sow his seed and he was scattered the seed some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up some fell on the rocky places where it did not have much soil it sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seeds fell on good soil where it produced a good crop. A hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He who has ears, let him hear. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak the people in parables? He replied, The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. Whoever has will be given more, and he will have an abundance. Whoever does not have even what he has will be taken from him. This is why I speak to them in parables. Though seeing, they do not see. Though hearing, they do not they do not hear or understand in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah you will be ever hearing but never understanding you will be ever seeing but never perceiving for this people's heart has become callous they hardly hear with their ears and they have closed their eyes reminds me of this modern-day church um, otherwise they might see with their eyes hear with their ears, understand with their hearts, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. For I tell you the truth, many prophets and righteous men long to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches it away. What was sown in his heart, this is the seed sown along the path. The one who received the seed that fell on rocky places is the man who hears the word and at once receives it with joy. But since he has no root, he lasts only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, he quickly falls away. The one who receives the seed that fell among the thorns is the man who hears the word, 
but the worries of his life of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it make it making it unfruitful but the one who receives the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word and understands it he produces a crop yielding a hundred sixty or thirty times what was sown so another thing that the Holy Spirit had put upon my heart is um, I was taking a plant out of a pot you know um, the pot they sell it in and I was putting it in the ground and it was root bound if you know what root bound means it's like it has its its roots are all like um, compounded in the bottom of the pot and it's just like it has nowhere to grow and um, he likened this to I'll show you my pretty <laughs> my pretty plan I put on my table today the Holy Spirit likened this to being confined in a church with um, religious or legalistic spirit and being confined um, to that dogma and not being able to grow spiritually in I'm just being honest I mean this is what he put upon my heart because I was praying about something personal and I pulled that plan out and it was root bound and the Holy Spirit started speaking to my heart and that is so true like um, if you're in a situation where you have grown spiritually with the Lord Jesus Christ um, you know you may be growing out of the pot that you are in do you do you follow me you may be growing out of the pot that you were planted in and you may be growing beyond um, where you have been planted I hope that makes sense to you um, I have nothing against church we need the body we need to um, you know edify and encourage each other we need to have our brethren but when it becomes a place of confinement when it becomes a place of rigidity hard-nosed uh, religious spirit legalistic spirit this will confine you it's like um, you know how they say when you when you transplant a plant and they say you know go uh, one or two sizes up from the pot that it was originally in that is because you add the good soil at the bottom and you add extra soil and you allow those roots to spread and grow and that is what the Holy Spirit was like you know speaking to my spirit another thing that he had put upon my heart um, I had put some sunflower seeds down and it got really really windy and um, the top layer of the um, soil had blown off and I, I came out today to check on them and all the top layer of soil was completely blown off and the seeds were just exposed and that is just so um, amazing that he led me to the parable of the sower. Here's a, um, I'm going to continue if you don't mind, but I just feel like the Holy Spirit is really like showing me this lesson because, you know, yard work for me is, is kind of therapy, you know, when I have a lot on my mind and I just want to, um, be outside and hear the birds and pray. That's, that's what helps me. But, um, so he had recently, <laughs> this wind is really killing me. He had recently put them upon my heart. Um, I did a video on it about the, um, the tares, you know. So, the parable of the weeds. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed seed among the wheat and went away. When the wheat sprouted and formed heads, then the weeds also appeared. The owner's servants came to him 
and said, Sir, didn't you sow good seed in your field? Where then did the weeds come from? An enemy did this, he replied. The servants asked him, Do you want us to go and pull them up? No, he answered, because while you are pulling the weeds, you may root up the uh, wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at that time, I will um, tell the harvesters, first collect the weeds and tie them in bundles to be burned and then gather the wheat and bring it into my barn. Isn't that amazing? And um, what he's speaking about is um, the weeds are the tares and the, um, and the harvest is speaking about um, the Christians. And it's just so cool how he speaks. Um, so, uh, here, it, here it is explained on um, verse 36. Then he left the crowd and went into the house. His disciples came and said to him, Explain to us the parable of the weeds in the field. He answered, The one who sowed the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world, and the good seed stands for the son, sons of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one, and the enemy who sows them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the harvesters are angels. As the weeds are pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. The Son of Man will send out his angels and they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. They will throw them into the fiery furnace where they will be weeping and gnashing teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. Isn't that amazing? I mean, I just love the Lord so much. And, um, you know, he guides and, and speaks to us in different ways. I know that some people think they don't hear from him, but I truly believe that we all have the capacity and the ability to hear from him. It's just that he speaks in different ways than what we're used to. Um, he speaks in um, signs and wonders and it's just like when he's saying that for those that have eyes to see let them see um so i just want to encourage you to seek jesus and ask him to speak to you whether it be in his way or a way that you would understand he truly wants intimacy with his children and he truly wants for us to understand supernatural things so I hope this spoke to somebody tonight sorry I still have to show you my pretty flowers and um, you know please stay encouraged it's been a very very rough road um, but I just love how the Lord leads and I and I pray for all of you and I ask that you also pray for me and may God bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.